Garcia. Hey, look at that! Have you ever seen anything like that? Oh! Oh! And here comes Hurst. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Two, they think it's all over. David is away this week, so we welcome back Steve Davis. <laughs> With Steve and Jonathan this week is a comedian who was once refused entry to Australia because the authorities thought he looked like a criminal. They've changed their tune a hundred years ago. It was sole purpose of visit. <laughs> Gary Lineker is also away, so I have great pleasure in welcoming Europe's victorious Ryder Cup captain, Sam Torrance. <laughs> With Sam and Rory this week is a Wales and Newcastle footballer who is mentioned in Roy Keane's autobiography after his late tackle put Keane out of the FA Cup final. If you want to read about it, he's in the index under F and C. <laughs> <laughs> We start this week's show with Sporting Bluff. Sam, Rory and Gary, have a look at these three greats. Now, here's Scholes. Now, Beckham now for England. David Beckham! It's the equaliser within two minutes. And Rock of Gerola makes it five Group 1 wins in a row. What have you got to say, Steve's team? <clears throat> you have to read the card, Rich. What? Oh. <laughs> Who's your president again? His name is <laughs> Wit. <laughs> oh, that's the same name as our prime minister. <laughs> uh, England's David Beckham was recently voted Welsh Sports Personality of the Year. Uh, the horse Rock of Gibraltar was recently voted Welsh Sports Personality of the Year. Catherine Zeta Jones was recently voted Welsh Sports Personality <laughs> of the Year Day. Now, Gary, um, you, you play for Wales. Whereabouts exactly are you from? Uh, North Wales, Mancot, a little place called Mancot. Because if you'd been born in England, you could have played for Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this uh, Welsh Sports Personality of the Year thing, where did you come in the rankings, Gary? Just trying to dive with the engine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Last so, time I was in the country, uh, there was a kidnapping plot against uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. That really wouldn't work out. You, you wouldn't see David Beckham reading a ransom note very well. <laughs> I think it was a shopping list. <laughs> Spice. <clears throat> Kidnappies. <laughs> million pound carrier bags. <laughs> donut. <laughs> donut. <laughs> donut. <laughs> What's the next one? Uh, Rock of Gibraltar. Rock of Gibraltar. The Walk of Gibraltar? You think that's a Chinese restaurant, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I must say welcome back. It's nice to have a real sporting champion on the show. Well, no disrespect, obviously, but I mean... <laughs> I mean, one within living memory, you know what I mean? <laughs> and despite what they all say, I don't think that moustache makes you look at all like a big gay Saddam Hussein. <laughs> is about to join the uh, the seniors tour, is that why? Yeah. That's a, that's youngest a... on the tour. I'm You'll, be the youngest. That. You'll be showing off, aren't you? Talking about all the new music, like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> showing them your two good hips. <laughs> <laughs> what was the third one? The third one was Catherine Zeta-Jones, a beautiful nice. Welsh lady. She is lovely. She is a lovely girl. Do you know her? Well, she yeah. must be nice. She takes her dad everywhere. <laughs> yeah, You're always playing me sport. Yeah, what really... she got to do with sport? <laughs> She's a runner, isn't she? Very fast runner, she was when I met her, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's got to be Beckham, isn't it? That's Beckham. Okay, That's you said David Beckham. That was Rich, wasn't it? Let's see if you're right. Yes, Rich had it right. David Beckham, England's captain, is actually the Welsh sports personality of the year. Catherine Zeta-Jones did win Best Welsh Actress at the same award ceremony. It was for her amazing performance in the sentence, of course I didn't marry him for his money. <laughs> 
Steve, Jonathan and Rich, it's that ludicrous novelty sport for you, American football. Here are the Oakland Raiders on their way to losing the recent Super Bowl against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Dwight Smith will score! Another touchdown! Trying to nail 48 on the scoreboard for Tampa Bay. And final score, the Buccaneers 48 and the Oakland Raiders 21. That was the Oakland Raiders going down to a surprise defeat. Now, according to cult writer Hunter S. Thompson, a huge Raiders fan, what lies behind their otherwise successful season, Sam's team? The Oakland Raiders players were prepared for every match by a team of Thai masseurs. The Oakland Raiders players have the injuries treated using leeches. The Oakland Raiders players were motivated by a Red Indian medicine man. They're fantastic <coughs> names, though, don't they? All the teams have great names. Like we got Hull them. City. You know what we should have? Names like Stoke City Pikes. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> How about Leeds United Convicts? That'd be good. <laughs> How about Manchester United? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they don't have uh, cheerleaders for uh, for British soccer. Because... Hey, they should have that in snooker. That would be great, wouldn't it? Cheerleaders, give us an S, give us a T, give us an E. Oh, he's out already. <laughs> <laughs> Too quick. What were the other ones? It was a uh, Thai massage and, and leeches. I don't really care. <laughs> See, that's what's wrong with your yeah. game right now. If you don't mind yeah. saying. Thai massage. Thai massage. I love the Thai food, though. Rich, you like Thai food? I love it, Jonathan. It's, it's popular in America, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of restaurants in Thailand. <laughs> OK, Steve, just take five now. All right. <laughs> they don't call them Thai restaurants here, though. No, just restaurants, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realised David Gower sharp as a whip. <laughs> Leeches. Leeches. In the old days, you wouldn't have leeches. You'd just have an old bloke come up with a magic sponge. I'd uh, rather have what? the sponge than leeches on my ghoulies anyway, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, what about that one on your top lip? That must be healed by now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang it off. Let's have a look. Right. I'll tell you what. Off. And when you finish with it, let's end up with Leslie Hash. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the final one? Red Indians, you said. Red Indians. We shouldn't call them Red Indians anymore. If we're going to be PC about it, Steve isn't a loser. <laughs> He's trophically challenged. <laughs> Whoa, he is not fat. He's <laughs> enormous. <laughs> be nice. You put a nice spin on it. That's what you do. Do you have an Indian name? What, well, you mean like Dances with Wolves? Yeah. Steve would be Big Chief Sitting Down or <laughs> Apache Korea. <laughs> Now, I am enjoying this, but it's still round one. Well, I know. <laughs> You're American. You would know. What would you think? I think it's uh, probably the Red Indians, Native American. OK, so you think Rory was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. In fact, Sam was telling the truth. According to Hunter S. Thompson, the Oakland Raiders do indeed get the leeches out when a player goes down. During the Super Bowl in San Diego, fans ate over 100,000 hot dogs. And if you laid all those hot dogs end to end, you'd have more fun than if you'd bothered watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Steve's team have no points and Sam's team have three. Time now to look at some dubious excuses. Sam's team, it's your opposing captain, Steve Davis, for you. Here he is at the recent UK Championships, powering his way to defeat against John Higgins. I'd probably be disappointed, but I don't think he's any reason to be. As ever, the gentleman, Ray, isn't he? His cue's already been taken apart. <laughs> Now, Steve had to beat Mark King, a player ranked 14 places above him, to qualify for the televised rounds of the tournament. And instead of the expected humiliation, Steve actually won. So what was it that motivated Steve, Sam's team? Was your opponent not allowed to chalk his white stick? <laughs> <laughs> you play snooker, Gary? No, not really. I thought all footballers no, played no. snooker in between gambling and whoring and... <laughs> <laughs> golf, did you play golf? golf yeah. 
Vijay Singh, you know him? He had a good win the other day, didn't he? He did. He did. He's, he's a brilliant player. Huh? You know, he once proposed to uh, Faldo's caddy. What, uh, Fanny Simerson? Yeah. He wanted to make a Fanny sing. <laughs> <laughs> Reminded me, wouldn't it be great if they brought back the good old days? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know it. I Do think you? I know it, yeah. He nicked your leather coat, didn't he? How do you know that? He nicked your leather John Parrot oh, told me. Yeah. Parrot told me. He nicked your leather coat. It might even have been Thailand. He nicked your leather coat and you wanted a bit That's of revenge. Right, was that the, was the motivation. Yeah. That's the correct answer for three points. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> I didn't think you'd get that one. <laughs> Very good. Steve was actually thirsting for revenge after Mark King allegedly nicked his leather coat following last year's Thai Masters. <laughs> to be fair, we do knock Steve on this show, but he was captain of the Europe side that recently beat the USA in Poole's Moscone Cup for the first time ever. And not only did Steve slam home the winning pot, but it was his 50 pence on the table. So well done, <laughs> Steve. We've seen we move on to Sam's greatest sporting achievement of last year. It's Europe's Ryder Cup win against the USA at the Belfry. This is for the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a tremendous achievement for this European side. Now, according to reports, it wasn't Sam who inspired our Ryder Cup win, but Nigel Mansell. How so? Steve's team. It was nice seeing him kissing his daughter at the end, though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's charming, wasn't it? Love it. Yeah. Lovely touch. Is it true that during the Ryder Cup, to calm down some of the younger players, Monty used to suckle them? Is that, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> it's Nigel Mansell. How did he inspire them, Rich? And I know you know the answer. I don't even so know who the f Nigel Mansell is. <laughs> Driver. I have horrible memories of golf. My mom died on the golf course. Got hit by lightning between the first and second holes. Oh, that's a small target. <laughs> they said it was probably her stance. <laughs> well, he just inspired them. He inspired them by being inspirational. I need to know so who, who he inspired. He, he probably inspired, inspired Colin. Steady, why not give them the answer? Well, I'm Jimmy. trying to. <laughs> I like that look, he's getting a big Glaswegian on you then. He's going to headbutt you in a minute. <laughs> Sam, tell us the answer. Uh, I was Paul McGinley's mentor. Mm. I'll give you your bonus point. I knew that. Yay. Because you won us the Ryder Cup. Nigel, it turns out, is Paul McGinley's personal Nick, mental Nick, guru. Nick, Nick, yeah. Nick, Nick. yeah? Who's Paul McGinley? <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, it turns out, is Paul McGinley's personal mental guru. As McGinley approached the 18th green before sinking that winning putt, there was only one thing on his mind. I was thinking of the things that Nigel Mansell told me. Focus and concentrate, focus and concentrate. He has told me about them again and again. <laughs> McGinley said Mansell's advice was so helpful he wished he could bottle it. Although if he wants help bottling it, he should get advice from Tim Henman. <laughs> the scores at the end of that round are Steve's team with no points and Sam's team with seven. What happened to Steve? What happened to Steve? Come on, boys. Come on. It's our goal celebrations round now. Sam's team, it's the future of English football for you. Southampton striker, James Beatty. Beatty's coming in. Oh, save! For God, this time he's there now. Well, you had to expect Beatty to score at least one. So, why does James Beatty reveal the word obvious on his t shirt when he scores? Sam's team. If you really look at it closely, there's a hidden message to Michael Owen. It's got I.O.U. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true at Newcastle you have your names on the front of the shirt so Bobby Robson can remember who you are? <laughs> <laughs> Does he have trouble with your name? Or? He used to, yeah, yeah, but I think he's... What did he used to call you? Sheedy. Sheedy? There's <laughs> <laughs> a story about, um, I think it's Shola Amiobi, isn't it? This reporter said, so what's your nickname, Shola? And he said, I haven't really got one. Well, what does Bobby Robson call you? He says, Carl Court. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak Welsh? Um, you have to learn it in school, so only a little bit. Go but on, say something Welsh for us. Rydwi'n Sharag Cymraeg? Is that Welsh for a shag in the rug? 
I can speak Welsh. I know some words of Welsh. Uh, nuclear in Welsh is nuclear. <laughs> it's true, it's Welsh. Uh, clock is clock. <laughs> um, gangster rapper is gangster rapper. <laughs> So, James Beatty and his T-shirt with obvious <laughs> on In a couple of matches when Sven Jürgen Eriksson was watching James Beatty, I think the conjectural question would be, um, are you going to score James, uh, are you going to play for England? Obvious. No. Here's James Beatty himself with the answer. The reason I had obvious written on my T-shirt was uh, because a lot of my friends were in the, in the crowd at Middlesbrough and um, it's a little joke that we have when we're uh, messing about because if you know one of us says something that's just uh, blatantly obvious then one of the lads will shout out in a stupid voice obvious and uh, that was the reason why I did it. <laughs> That'd be a good <laughs> night out with James and his mates, eh? Yeah. And you can win a night out with James Beattie and his friends. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for putting your hand up before speaking. <laughs> How would you enter that competition? <laughs> How'd you go out with James Beatty? <laughs> Beatty was recently had up in court for drink driving, but he insisted, I do not have a drink problem, and my two managers, the Strachan twins, can confirm that. <laughs> Steve's team, you'll recognise Macclesfield's Danny Whitaker scoring the third goal in their 3-0 win at Hull in this season's FA Cup first round proper. Only half away, and this is Danny Whitaker, and that was a wonderful strike. Celebrations in order. So, what did all that mean, do we think? Is it because Macclesfield's nickname is the Macclesfield Turf? <laughs> <laughs> They're break dancing. No. They are break dancing. You might say no, but they are. Yeah. You think you know everything. That's well, you're wrong. <laughs> If you knew everything, you wouldn't still live in Stoke now, would you? <laughs> How do you know? That's not the answer we have. Well, who told you that? Because we asked them. Well, they, we they, asked they, them. Yeah, and you know what? They lied to you. They lied. <laughs> they're from Macclesfield. They don't know how to give a straight answer when a man from a big city asks them a question. They get confused. <laughs> they think it might go on their tax returns or something. Oh, you, you breakdancing might be a fee for that. No, they are just told you something else. An almost perfect Macclesfield accent there. <laughs> Well, that one was from somewhere else. He's been bought in at great expense. <laughs> he's an Italian player or something. Oh, it's Italian accent. No, now. maybe it's French. I don't know. I don't know everything, but I know the answer is bloody break dancing. <laughs> it's clear as the nose on your pikey face. <laughs> Come on, Nick, give us a break. Come on, they've got seven and they're obviously cheating. Also, they've got a champion on their side. We've got a bloody yank and a washed up snooker player, didn't you? <laughs> Disrespecting either of you. It's like Loserville over here. We now have to raise our hands in order to ask a question. That's how badly we're being beaten. <laughs> what is it, Captain? You must know. No, I don't. I've it's got a Macclesfield football team. They're celebrating some way, presumably to get on a program like this. You just to picked your ear and then wiped it on your hair. <laughs> I've, I've been sitting in front of the cameras for 20 years. I know what I do with you my You did fingers. that. We'll have a look. You clap back in slow motion. No, no, that's not. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> OK. It was all the idea of Macclesfield midfielder Chris Byrne, although sadly he couldn't join in as he'd been in Manchester a couple of weeks before where, inevitably, he'd been shot. Here's Matt Tipton <laughs> to explain further. <laughs> This celebration was a copy of a sex act that we seen on a late night porn film on an away trip. Chris Byrne, who thought of the idea, was in hospital when we played Hole in the Coffin, so we thought, as he'd been shot, we'd give it a tribute to him. He'd been shot! He'd been shot! How on earth are we expected to get that? <laughs> Read the paper. The man is that. a congenital idiot, clearly. <laughs> He's even got a pointed head. Oh, no. <laughs> will you be running another competition to go out for a night with? <laughs> you more interesting, one, wouldn't it? <laughs> Chris Byrne's probably not the only league footballer to have been shot. Rude Van Nisseroy goes down like he's been shot every time he gets into the penalty area. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Steve's team have no points and Sam's team have <laughs> seven. <laughs> it's 
sweaty palms time now as we play field of sportsmen. Sam and Rory, you're up first this week. Take okay. your positions, take your blindfold okay. with you. Okay. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm a female. Oh, blimey, there's loads of them. Gosh, oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> My girlfriend's watching. I'm not coming home. <laughs> I think you are, Rory. <laughs> How long have we got to this, Nick? <laughs> 90 minutes, was it? No. <laughs> this is fabulous. <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> actually. What was that? I don't know. This yeah, is that's, a, that's a pom pom. What is, <laughs> is it? Cheer it. Oh, I love cheer pom poms. <laughs> They're very quiet. Well, Couldn't West, be West Ham, West could Ham it? got nothing to cheer for, have they? How can you possibly know it's West Ham? <laughs> How can you possibly. That's just cheating. You just said. I can see under don't... here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. How could you know that? No idea. Can you really? No, no idea. See, he was very <laughs> dubious to me, but Sam Torrance <laughs> says he honestly had no idea, and I'm going to trust him. Don't, so, don't, Susanna, you get really three didn't. Points. It's finished, Rory. <laughs> don't sit down. It's Rory! Yeah, you can. Rory! That's the guy, come on. Let us go. Just sit down. Steve and Jonathan, positions, please. It is distressing, Nick. Not only are we losing, but, you know, they get the ladies, and, you know, we're that close to a successful sexual harassment charge against him. <laughs> you can't let him near the ladies. He thinks harass is two words. Right, <laughs> <laughs> on. OK. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? This is both. This is good. <laughs> Perfumed water. Jonathan. I think what? It's a bath. I think we're in luck. <laughs> I bet you it's like a hockey team, the ladies' hockey team. <laughs> I don't, I'm going in. If you just tuned in, this is a Crime Watch special showing you <laughs> what really happened at Michael Barrymore's house. <laughs> now get back. Get back. <laughs> it's men. I reached down. I thought I'd find a lady. I felt what I thought was an eel. <laughs> it's the men in the bath. I'm it's the bar it's men football bath men. Yeah, I'll give you that. Team bath. Wow. Well done. Excellent. Thank you, Jack. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the scores at the end of that round are Steve's team with three points and Sam's team with ten. We end it all by playing the name game, the team in the league goes first, which is Sam's team, so that means Rory's going to be doing the clues. Pass those along to Rory, please. As many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. Jimmy. Um, 
he did the winning putt in the... Um, McGinley, that. Paul McGinley. That's very good indeed. Uh, I select his horse, Rocket Gibraltar. Rocket Gibraltar. Very good. Um, it's a teammate of yours, um, a duck's arse. Do <laughs> <laughs> the expression <laughs> as... Tight. Tight. Tight as Bramwell. Very good indeed. <laughs> uh, captain of the USS Enterprise. Captain Strange. Kirk. 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 Three children born together. Triplets. Kirk, Kirk triplets. Very <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, good. <laughs> Look, uh, a legendary Welsh striker this is. Same name as the engine. Rush. Ivor uh, Oldchurch. Oh, very good. This is a Yorkshire you. cricketer. His first name is the same as Giggsy's first name. Ryan. And his second name, if your arse was side bottom. It's more yeah, natural, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah. It's fine, <laughs> This is a, an odd Ryder Cup captain from America. Odd, peculiar. Curtis Strange. <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> then he'd move my lips. Then he'd move my lips. Um, one of your um, teammates uh, is Peruvian. His second name sounds like. Um, Nobby Solano. Nobby Solano, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, this is. Um, <laughs> So, 16. We'll win it for you. You can do it. You can do it, Johnny. Your time starts now. OK, ex Formula One champ, very boring bloke. Nigel Benson. OK, uh, snooker player. Uh, second name is, you find it on the rose. Prick your finger. Oh, uh, Willie Thorne. Thank you. Uh, this is what, if you cut a tree, this is the juice that comes out. Sap. First name would be. Uh, Warren Sap. Well, well done, you. Imagine All right. That. He's an American bloke. Oh. Uh, this is a, a footballer, a Welsh footballer. Uh, second name, if you go Gary. to a lot of uh, musical concerts, they are. Get, uh, right. Oh, yeah, that's it. We're cooking now. OK, if you were uh, late at night in a little... George Foreman. You were in the garden, <laughs> spying on someone, little animals, black and white, what are they called? Uh, 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 Second name of... Uh, uh, no, not beavers. That's, that's... No, we don't want to know what you do at night when you're spying on beavers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, give that, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. All right, these are Chinese footballers, apparently. Second, uh, second word is, you know Number when Roy 22. lifts his arm up and it's a bit of a whip? <laughs> you know? That thing we talked about and we left the thing in his dressing room and he didn't put it on. Uh, it's like a ghost would say this to you, uh, but a very timid one might finish before he's halfway. And instead of going, he'd go... Deodorant. No, you know what they say? <laughs> when they shout at Mr. Selector, they go, Yo, Mr. Selector. <laughs> Mr. Selector. <laughs> Mr. Selector. Hey, All right, hey, if it was a uh, Hugh Grant film about a something... Boy. OK, why not? <laughs> no, Very why? Good. Bold! Bold! Right, OK. And the second thing, you play with one of these when you're playing snooker. I know you don't do it much, but you have that stick. That stick, you call it a... It's just fascinating watching your mind. Can you not <laughs> remember what it's called? <laughs> Q. A Q. Q bow. I get given a Chinese footballer, and he gets bloody... It's not fair. <laughs> no, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. <laughs> I will not be silent. I, I demand my right to be heard. <laughs> It's not fair. It's not fair. You, you demand your right to be heard. You That's never listen. No one gives me a chance to speak on this show. You never <laughs> listen. <laughs> so, Steve Seam have nine points, but this week's winner is Sam Seam with 18. Sam, Rory and Gary, Steve, Jonathan and Rich, we're all off to take Rich to a proper game of football. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. I think it's all over. Book your front row seat for the Six Nations, England versus Italy. We're live at Twickenham in Grandstand tomorrow at quarter to three here on BBC One. Oh, and football, it's Watford versus Burnley, the FA Cup quarter final. Live from quarter past one on BBC Two.